Viktor Lazic loves books. His dream is to build the biggest library between Vienna and Istanbul. In Serbia's capital, Belgrade. So he's collecting and preserving as many books as he can. He receives no state funding and has only a small number of assistants. But what he lacks in staff, he makes up for in passion. Although not everyone is happy about Lazic's plans. Storage crates as far as the eye can see. This is Viktor Lazic's book warehouse, located in the air raid shelter of a school in Belgrade. The passages are so narrow you can barely squeeze through them. This is a perfect place for hiding. Lazic has already collected over one million books. But it will still be some time before he reaches his goal of assembling the region's largest library. Viktor Lazic attended this same school when he was a child. Over the years, he remained on good terms with school officials, and that's why they let him use the basement to store his books. Today, the collection fills four large rooms. A lot of these books and magazines date from before the breakup of Yugoslavia. But they're running out of space. Some books will have to go. But it isn't easy for Lazic and his colleague Stefan to choose which ones. You can still use all of these, but look carefully first. This can all go. Okay, but if something valuable gets thrown out, it's going to be your fault. Sometimes you really get on my nerves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> A few years ago, Lazic seriously injured his back lifting so many crates. Today, he has a few assistants. Still, moving the books around is a real challenge. At the worst moment, one of the worst in my life, for sure, was uh, when we received some huge donation, about five trucks of books. One whole library just collapsed and they kicked out the books. And we took them over. It was, I don't even know how many boxes. I guess about 2,000 boxes at once in one day. Uh, and. Uh, we didn't have enough workers to do this job, it's Im impossible. And what I did, I invited all my friends, um, neighbors, uh, even people on the street just passing by, we were begging them, you know, to, to help us to bring it in here. Victor's colleagues, Stefan and Zoran, help carry a few crates up from the basement. <laughs> <laughs> The books are being donated to a prison in Belgrade. The crates will be loaded into this old car, which often breaks down. But Lazic can't afford a new car. This is the home of Lazic's parents, a few hundred meters from the school. In 2010, this is where he founded the association Adligat, the cornerstone of the library project. The association sponsors a book and travel museum. He doesn't earn any money from it. Lazic is a lawyer by profession and invests almost everything he earns in this project. He also inherited a large sum, and he put that into the book project too. Lazic could afford to live comfortably, but he spends his money on books. His parents don't quite understand that. It's love for books and culture and literature and belief that we are doing something that is truly important, not only for this country, but uh, it has even bigger importance, mm -hmm. broader importance for the world, and at least for this region. Lazic's project now receives financial support from a few wealthy donors. The extra money could help the museum grow to 10 rooms. Lazic conducts guided tours through the collection. He wants the project to become a cultural beacon for the entire Balkan region. 
His collection already rivals that of the country's biggest libraries. Nice fragrance. Yes, but it'll change over time. Serbia's government institutions don't seem very interested in Lazic's work. In fact, they've ignored it. Some visitors have criticized that, like culture journalist Ivana Matjevic. Why are the collections of famous artists like the actor Pavle Vuzic or the famous poet Miodrag Pavlovic on display here and not in the National Library or the National Film Archive? But if they're in safe hands here and visitors can see and touch them, which is very unusual, then why not? This is a refugee shelter in Bogavadja, 60 kilometers south of Belgrade. Lazic will occasionally drop off some books here, most of them in foreign languages. Here are some books. <laughs> books offer a welcome diversion from the monotonous daily routine at the refugee shelter. Fatima from Shiraz in Iran is pleased to receive a book in her native language, Farsi. This place has its problems, but we can try to make the most of it by keeping busy with things like reading. More than a hundred refugees live at the shelter. Many are from Afghanistan or Iran. Lazic doesn't receive a lot of books in Farsi, but when he does, he brings most of them here. You know, it is very important for intellectuals and also for children to have a touch with their own culture, with their own identity. It also makes them feel more welcomed here, it makes them feel like at home. Um, so I think it is very important for them, yes. Hello, Victor Lazic. Who's calling? Hello, can you hear me? A little later, Lazic returns to Belgrade. He's trying to secure an unusually large donation of books. But he has to be faster than the public libraries, and he is most of the time. But if he doesn't move quickly, the collection will be given to another institution. Or the books may even end up in the garbage dump. So this uh, donation, what kind of books in it? Well, uh, this was one of the extremely famous uh, liter um, TV and uh, theater critic. So there are, there are excellent uh, books about uh, TV, about theater, art. Yeah, it's amazing. Lazic's staff are just as crazy about books as he is. They earn only one euro 40 per hour. That's just a bit more than Serbia's minimum wage. Plus, they work overtime and put in irregular hours. Lazic has been working on his book project for eight years now. Word about the project has spread. And he's getting more and more calls from people who want to donate books that had belonged to deceased relatives. His schedule is pretty hectic. Whenever he needs a break, Lazic likes to come to this meadow near the Belgrade fortress. It's one of his favorite spots in his hometown. From here, he has a perfect view of where the Sava River joins the Danube. He's enjoyed visiting the park since he was a teenager, when he came here to meet girls. Well, it's a place where I spend most of my teenage years, like after school. My school is in uh, nearby. Uh, we would come here and hang out here, so I have a lot of nice memories. Lazic's house is also his office and a place to store books. But the fact that he's put all of his money, time and energy into the book project has had a negative effect on his personal life. Three years ago, 
his fiance left him. They'd been together for some time, but she said she just couldn't take it anymore. Because there was no money, not only uh, for workers, there was no money for fuel. If someone donates books, I would, you know, put the books in the car and would not have enough fuel to bring them uh, here. And there was not enough money even for food. I mean, mm, we weren't actually hungry, but it was always, you know, problematic if uh, it will be enough for everything or not. Lazic believes that his book project is carrying on a family tradition. His great-grandfather loved books, and some of his ancestors even founded a library. But the fact remains that he no longer has much room for himself in his own house. Still, that doesn't bother him. I give everything I have, and most of the people uh, in Adliga, the founders, uh, even the workers, they actually have to invest themselves to keep this project running. At this reception, they're celebrating the addition of some new storage rooms. Lazic has made a name for himself in literary circles. The guests here include several prominent writers and other well-known people. It's networking for a good cause, preserving books. Viktor Lazic has taken another step toward his goal of building a huge library. But he also knows that he's got a lot of work ahead of him.